Clown phobic people are now hiding their tables, shaking with Rob's surprise day. Well, I can do this. I mean, whatever. Bah. All right. Comments. VGX Rob, uh, he was a founder and suddenly he's gone when bankruptcy hits. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Isn't that how it works out? I don't know. <laughs> Didn't Voyager come back from a similar loss hack? And no, they weren't around. I mean, you, I mean, the document save was uh, put out in 2018. Thoughts on Cody, the currency of the internet built on Cardano? Like Cardano, don't really know much about Cody, sorry. Uh, oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> that's pretty good. Why not clown the CEO and put clown music when CEO is saying take risk management? I will do that next time. Jayon Chow, very nice. Are you cashing out assets stored in your ledger? I already took my profits. I'm just, just now accumulating. If there's some huge, hey, there we go. If there's some huge, uh, big, huge bump, I'll probably take some profits along the way. But I have to take a look at my spreadsheet and see which ones I had. <sighs> good question. And let's see. Stop it. Stop it. There. There you go. All right. So how do you think the Voyager case will linger? I think it'll linger for quite some time. And uh, hmm. there, was, there, there was two stories that we went over about these two different financial institutions that went through bankruptcy. One, it took three years, and then one took three months. And people were saying, well, no company has ever come back that was in uh, used financial instruments. And that's not true. I mean, we see uh, Apple went through it. That worked out okay, of course, because they had hard assets. Uh, GMC and Ford, uh, maybe GMC, I don't know about Ford. GMC definitely did, and they came back because they had hard assets. But the other ones that we talked about in the video, uh, they were just financial instruments, and they came back. So, uh, Let's see. No, this is real Rob. Rob never looked that good. Let's see. Do you have a spreadsheet example I can borrow? I should put one out, actually. I should. I should. <laughs> so do I keep the do I get to keep the crypto that I bought in Voyager or no? Really comes down to how they restructure. Again, there was two different ways. There was them for the for the restructuring, and they do everything in-house and they get lenders and and then of course you'll probably have to take a haircut. I'll just be honest with you. I don't think you're gonna get 100% of your crypto back. There's that option, or someone else buys them out and says, okay, in this, if someone buys them out, here's the thing. If some place buys them out and says, you're not getting anything, what's the point of that? What would be the point of, of doing that? Because you can't really acquire the customers because the customer's like, F you, I'm out of here. You're not going to give me anything back after you acquired them? What's the point of even being here? And then, of course, if, if some people say, well, it's to eliminate competition. Who cares? Just let them die anyhow. So I, I would think that if a third party comes around and uh, they buy them up, they would have to give some equity back to the people uh, that are lost. And then, the, but the question then would be, well, how much? I don't think it's a complete loss unless they go to chapter seven, which is straight up liquidations. But again, we took a look at the finances. There is still some there. It just depends. Okay. So this is a good question. Rob, with Ledger, is it safe to stake assets or will they go the other hand? So look, there was a story we talked about with Ledger and them partnering up with some group where you're able to, I'm sorry, to stake your assets. Yeah, you can, there is a way to stake your assets through Ledger and they, but the thing is they have to, you have to understand that every single project every single blockchain is different like there may be some lockup here it's like for ethereum i don't think you can just put it in and take it out on your ledger i know for a fact if you're doing outside a ledger and you are staking your ethereum that's locked up until the merge happens and who knows when that's going to happen now with cardano it's different cardano is you can just put it in and put it out anytime you want to essentially i think there's like a t like a couple of minutes waits or something like that that's about it um 
through Avalanche. I want to say it's uh, 24 hours, 40 hours, something like that. And then um, other ones have different different time frame lockups. So for that situation, um, as far as staking assets, I don't stake my assets uh, via Ledger. I just put them into a wallet like Daedalus and go that way. Oh, researchers taking forward. I don't know. My question is, if the app's not active, why is the value going up? So Lucy, is it the Voyager token? Are you talking about Voyager? I'm guessing you are. Are you talking about the, um, the public stock? I don't know. Thanks, man. Use Chrono for rate of staking. You can do that. You know, man, we both live in Puerto Rico. At some point, we should uh, do a show. If you're not too busy doing all the other things that you're doing. Apple. Good guy. I don't, if you guys don't know Crypto Crow, you should watch his show. He's the OG. One of the OGs that I used to watch all the time. And I still, and I still do it from time to time. I just I get so damn busy with stuff. Uh, Justin, that's his name. Forgot your name, Crow. Justin. Uh, Voyager, I just had tokens, so I'll get stock too. Depending on the plan that uh, that goes through, it could be. So if they go in that situation where they say, we, we're going to do it ourselves, yes. For the third party, probably not. But it's all up in the air. You're welcome. People losing their life savings is nothing. Yeah. You know what? This is probably the worst bear market I've ever gone through. And this is my second one. The first one was bad enough. I mean, drawdowns of 85 to 95% is pretty crappy, I must admit. But what's crappier even more so is just losing everything. Because even if even when Bitcoin went 85% down, it didn't really matter. You're just like, well, I'll just stick it there and just wait. It'll go back up. And it did. And that was good. But now with uh, Celsius and Voyager and some other ones shutting off withdrawals, you're like, well, that's 100%. Am I ever going to see that again? That's what makes this probably the worst one. So if you can get through this, if you can get through this bear market, crypto winter, where exchanges are shutting down without being hacked, I might add, and the upcoming recession, which I believe we're in right now, with a war in Ukraine and different problems with uh, supply chain issues, especially in China, as they do also lockdowns. And of course, some new random various virus that will come about tomorrow, who knows? Um, then you get all the rewards you deserve. And then also, yeah, DeFi rug pulls. Good one, all right, soft. Yes, exactly, Andrew. You don't own your keys, you don't own your crypto. Yeah, so Jackie, thoughts on Simon and James' interview? I thought it was, it was like a novella. I mean, it was like when me and Simon were talking behind the scenes, he's like, I just can't say a bunch of stuff, NDAs and such like that. He goes, but I'm going to tell you right now. He goes, I just do not trust. And I'm like, I get it. And then when I, when I heard him on James, James's channel, and he's talking about the things behind the scenes and the things that Celsius did, and how they kind of threw him under the bus and uh, pretty much just lied about their organization. I was like, God, I was like, damn. And that's a, if they did that to a company that invested heavily into them, what do they do to just to retail people, you know, like us? Shoot. Oh, when I check the app, I see the value going up for all coins. I don't know how that's possible. I mean, maybe it is. Let's see. Um, this is the value that I have in CoinGecko. Unless the market is somehow, I can, let me refresh this just to make sure. Don't know, man. Don't know how that is. Yeah, it was painful to watch. That's for sure. B.R. McKay, the FDIC rejected my Voyager claim. FDIC insurance only applies in the lucky, but I'm an insurance. Metro Bank did not fail. Interesting. 
which let's take a peek here real quick, shall we? Bob's Twitter account. You look at. And then I'm looking for July 6th. No, is this it? It's July 5th. July 1st. This isn't right. This is it. The two things. Two things. Customers with crypto in their accounts will receive in exchange a combination of the crypto, proceeds from the 3AC recovery, common shares in the newly comp new company, and Voyager tokens, just like we talked about with the reorganization, that will, the documentation that was put forth in the Chapter 11 bankruptcy. And this one right here. It's important to note that as part of this announcement, we are confirming that customers with USD deposits in their accounts will receive access to those funds after reconciliation and fraud prevention process is completed with Metro Commercial Bank. And remember, and I'm not you know, saying like this is gospel and it's definitely gonna happen. I'm just saying this is what was said. I can only report the news. I can't make the news. Remember, where did it go? The amount, mm, No, it's December 31st. Active users. Ah, here we go. 350 million of cash is held at Metro Commercial Bank. So $350 million. It's quite a bit of chink. That's quite a chunk of change. So I would hope that they can say, well, okay, hopefully they don't use that to move it and pay for their debts. All right. Solana is a scam. There is a word we, we don't hear too often in crypto. Let's see. I think Solana is not a worthless project. <laughs> Fraud is part of Russians' everyday life. Let's see. Good question. Why is Voyager still minting VGX and dumping huge amounts on Binance? I'll have to take a look at the on-chain analysis of that. That would be interesting. If someone could send that to me, Rob, if you've got that, tag me in uh, Twitter. We'll talk about that later. Yeah. So Crypto Starter says, is I trust capital safe? This is a big question. One has gone along a lot. And I've been in talks with those guys to come on the show. It looks like the next two weeks or so, hopefully. They said that, look, you have to understand, I trust is a very, again, don't trust anybody. Verify. Even, even right now, even me, I could be lying straight to your face, just like people have been lying to my face. So with iTrust, it's a Roth IRA. They can't, in their terms of service in, in EULA, it didn't say anything about rehypothecation or loaning thing out or doing anything like that, which is what Celsius and Voyager was their downfall. iTrust, the, the credit that you put in there is for your retirement account. And there are certain laws and regulations that have to go along with that for them to even be uh, called a Roth IRA. So they say like, look, we don't, we're doing, they said, we're doing just fine because people are still gonna trade within their account because it's, it's, a, it's a tax, it's a tax savings when you trade within your Roth IRA account. You can, like when Bitcoin went up to 60,000, you could have sold Bitcoin in your Roth IRA account, stuck it in cash, waited to drop down to 20,000, then bought three more Bitcoin. You could have done that and there would have been no tax implications because it's a retirement account. So they said, we make 1% for all transactions. And we've done so well, we don't even charge a monthly fee. And uh, you know, when people get to that magical age of 59 and a half, hopefully I make it, who knows? Uh, then they take it out tax-free. This is the exact same thing that, uh, uh, who was it? <laughs> Got it confused with um, Ehrlich, Peter Thiel the PayPal founder. This is exactly what he did. He put his uh, PayPal shares into his Roth IRA when they were worth, weren't worth, they were worth pennies and pennies and pennies. And now it's worth $5 billion. Guess how much he's paying in taxes? 0.0% .0 when he turns 59 and a half years old. Do you own AVX? I own a little. It's not that much. I have the, of course, also we have uh, the Avalanche uh, stake pool. So I got to own 
some, but that, that doesn't really move around. <laughs> With a name like I trust, exactly. You can't trust nobody, man. I don't care if your mom texts you for your Coinbase password. It's probably a scam. Steve Austin, that's the bottom line. Is Ada a good DCA buy? I'll tell you this. You know that company that's uh, being sued, Solana? It went down a couple of times. I don't think Ada's ever been down. And uh, with all these DeFi products getting rug pulled, I don't think anything's been rug pulled on, on uh, Ada and Cardano. Goes a little bit slower, but seems to work out okay. And uh, the ecosystem. You know what? That's a great segue. Why don't I go to this? So there's a link in the description. And it looks something. Well, I can't show you the link, but it just says Cardano's a ghost chain. And there's a ghost emoji. And uh, it'll take you to, to here, to Google Docs. And you can share this with anybody you want to. Here's the Cardano ecosystem, the Cardano ecosystem in 2020. Here it is in 2021, in August. Here it is in November 2021. And here it is on April 2022. I couldn't even fit it in there. So yeah. And then of course, here's the projects being built on Cardano. Over a thousand. This was on 6th of June 2022. Here's the amount that's actually being staked. Here's the value of that staked value. Uh, here it is uh, as far as a reference into staking ratio, still around 71%. It may have gone down a little bit or up. But I think it's pretty amazing that with Cardano, you can stake and unstake anytime you want to. Solana, there's a waiting period in Ethereum. Is God knows how long that is with that merge. And uh, it's still up there, 71%. And of course, this is all based on not ratio percentage because there's Binance Chain at 81%, but it's based on uh, the actual market cap. So third highest, not too bad. And of course, with DeFi, yeah, not doing so hot in DeFi. Uh, the whole value locked in DeFi, which is 72 billion, 45 is on Ethereum chain, which makes sense. Ethereum, everything, everybody built on that. Everybody built a lot of stuff on Ethereum, but things are changing. Now they're building on Avalanche, now they're building on Solana, now they're building on Cardano. And just remember, Bitcoin for its DeFi only has 118.55, and of course Cardano has 118.56, so it barely beats Bitcoin in that. Yay, Cardano. So if you want to take a look at that, link in the description, and that's called Cardano is a ghost chain. <laughs> Yeah, Vicky says, get your funds off iTrust, tr please. Look, you can do that. You can take your iPhone. You know what? If you guys have any questions about iTrust, this is what I do and did. You know, you can contact a real person over at iTrust. Let me show you something. iTrust, name like iTrust, that was funny. Let's see. Yeah. So, I mean, ugh, sh wish I would have showed it to you. Probably would have helped. So, here's iTrust Capital. If you go to, it's just itrustcapital.com. That thing that's above my head all the time, that thing right there, uh, that's iTrust. Anyhow, there's a link in the description, like everything else. And when you go there, uh, if you click on support, you can just call them. And to say, hey, man, what's up? I don't want to get rug pulled. What's happening? How can you alleviate my fears and go from there? If at some point, again, can't tell you what to do. I'm not your dad. But if you feel like these sons, of, they're lying to me, take all, take all it off. But I will say this. Ask them the tax implications if you start to withdraw funds out of your Roth IRA. There's tax implications, especially when you withdraw early. Just saying. And don't come back to me and be like, Rob told me to take it all off and now I got a big tax bill. <sighs> Rob, look at Coinbase combining USD with USD on July 14th. I think it will look at the USDC. And eh, we'll see. Another good reason. Who knows what can happen? Take it all out of USDC, put it in cash. That's... Not investment advice, just what I will probably do because I don't want to deal with it anymore. Ah, good question. Can you do a cannonball in the pool when you sign off today? Would be sweet. Sure, it would be sweet, but I can't do that until Bitcoin hits 100,000. Be right there with you. Rob, do you think in Voyager, is gonna, well, I don't have that much in there. I think it was like 128 bucks or something like that. So will I get that back? Yeah, probably. 
I mean, from what uh, I just read out to you, I'm pretty sure. Uh, the crypto though, which I left VGX tokens on there. Should have sold it. That was me. <laughs> Look at this one. Wargasm. Hoskinson and his cult of crypto cryptards. I've never heard that. It's pretty good. Ah. It's pretty funny. Look, everybody's got a... I will say this, though. You know how like people say, it's a cult. That's a cult. This is a cult. Bitcoin's a cult. This is a cult. Cults do well. I, I didn't, that didn't come out right. Let me say that again. Uh, cults around businesses do well. So take a look at uh, Apple. I kind of consider that a cult. People wait like all the time for these stupid phones and they wait around the block for no good reason. Yet one of the biggest companies in the entire world. Also CrossFit. Uh, that's a cult, man. I mean, I don't have nothing against CrossFit. I just, you know, a lot of injuries and get in great shape and all that stuff, but it's crazy. That's a cult. And uh, those people are diehards on there. Some people call it a cult. I mean, it's called, you know, diehards and whatever else, right? But then in, in crypto and digital assets, there's a lot of cults out there, let's be honest. And uh, that, unfortunately, or fortunately, if you want to look at it, is what drives a lot of this, of the progress, because the people, like, are not going to give up. That's just how it is. So when I look at, like, projects, I'm just looking, like, what kind of community do they have here? How strong are they? And how much, how long are they willing to go? XRP had a pretty huge cult, still do. Cardano's pretty, pretty massive. Voyager had Voyager heroes, and there's still people who, you know, are into that, that thing. It's just, to me, I, I look at those types of passionate communities to say, might be something to look into. Yeah, VGX Rob. I was never going to give up on Voyager, but they gave up on us. It's a good quote. Hello, Val. Oh, yeah, man. Investor Brandon. Invest Herbalife for sure. What you think of Nexo? El Lobo? Uh, seems to be sticking around. Seems to be one of those people who wants to, uh, who wants to buy up these distressed assets, distressed companies, so I'll do that. <laughs> Jack says, I'm on the ADA and XRP cult. Stick around. You'd probably do pretty well. Ugh. ETA on Canada Deep Dive. Give me some more time. My grandson's here, so I got really, that, that's most of my time right there. Proof of work or proof of stake. I got to tell you, if it wasn't for Ethereum and Cardano, honestly, I just be like proof of work. Let's just do that. Just go from there, you know. Because it's amazing. Me and Ben from Into the Cryptoverse were talking before the DCA show on Friday, and I was like, you know, Ben, the longer I've been in here, the more I just become a Bitcoin maximalist. He's like, and he he chuckles and he looks away. He's like, well, bear markets do do that. There's a more Bitcoin maximalist born every day. And I was like, that's probably true. Uh, so yeah, if it wasn't for those two, probably that. But. Nah, you know what? I, I can't say it like that because I always, for, there are, and this is the big question about utility that we talk about. What, just think to yourself, and I had a, another whole series lined up, which I was going to go over um, Sri Lanka and how the Canadian banks just, not collapsed, but they just shut down this weekend because of uh, Rogers telecommunications broke. And then we're going to talk about Texas, the um, bills or uh, electricity costs going up super high. And of course, why, uh, you know, that's actually good for Bitcoin miners because they can just shut off and they get paid to shut off, which is crazy. I, I was going to go over all this stuff. And because when, when I was thinking about this, I'm like, well, where's the real like, like, like utility and things like that? And, and we could see because of like Sri Lanka, and because of the Canadian effect and because of the different countries, like I see there's real utility for Bitcoin if you want to use that as like to get out of the system. I'm pretty sure people in Sri Lanka, everything is collapsing. They can't even afford electricity and food. They're bankrupt. The whole country's bankrupt. So if you hold on to that fiat, now they're in negotiations with the IMF. That never goes good. Um, so I think a lot of them would like to be out of the system. And before Bitcoin, there was no options for that. I mean, you could, you could, you could buy gold but you better hope that your broke, poor neighbor doesn't find out that you have Bitcoin so he can, or sorry, from gold and silver so he can steal it right from your face. At least with Bitcoins, there's a little bit of an anonymity and you actually pay for things. 
So I just see stuff like that. And then there's other projects that I think are going to do good, like this play to earn. That is an actual real world utility. And I'm not talking about Axie Infinity. That, that game's dumb. It just is. I don't understand that game. I know people will say, well, I play it, but is it fun? I don't think it really has any, a lot of replayability on, other than the fact that people just pay it, play it to actually get paid. There's good games coming out. People want to actually play them. Gamers worldwide uh, and, uh, enter into the billions of people. So I think it's going to do good. And then move to earn. Like I'm always talking about Sweatcoin. I think that could be a great thing. And I talked about why. Did a deep dive on my second channel, Van Degen. You can check it out. Why I think it's going to be good. But proof of work in Bitcoin is probably, is obviously my number one hold these days. But uh, Bitcoin, uh, Ethereum, Cardano, do just fine. <laughs> Learn self-defense from a wrench attack. Jarky, thanks, my man, for putting that out again. <laughs> when you have millions of worthless dollars, you should send on gold and silver and probably Bitcoin. I got to tell you, uh, I don't understand why, why the gold and silver and Bitcoin crypto people clash. We should really be in the same camp. You know, I, I own a little gold, a little silver. I, my brothers own a lot and they rub it in my face all the time, which is always fun. Yes, exactly. Imagine playing Axie Infinity while games like Horizon, Elden Ring, and God of War exist. And if you've seen like big time that game coming out, that's going to be an awesome game. I've already seen the, the actual playthrough. I was brought in and got to see it. I'm like, ooh, this is cool. Do you want to talk about it? I'm like, yeah, I'll talk about it at some point. That's it. I always forget. Show us your hot tub. It's right there. There it is. Hot tub. All right. Thanks. Do you hold Matic? You do hold a little Matic. Sold some. So I thought I was going to go. So I was like, eh, it would probably be, probably, all these all coins going to be great next bull run, just not this bull run. What are these mythical things called profits? Yeah, I know. Trust me, give it two years or so and everything will be a little bit different. And then lastly, we gotta get out of here. Do you think the CEO of Celsius will ever show up and explain to everybody what he did and all the S that happened with his company? I think there's better chance that Steve Ehrlich will come out before Alex Mashinsky. At least Steve and Voyager, they're at least in the lead making all these documents public because of the chapter 11 bankruptcy. Still, she still has to get there. Yeah, I don't know. So that's it. That's all we got. So look, thanks for everybody for showing up. I appreciate it. If you like today's video, thumbs up, subscribe, all that great stuff uh, down there. And uh, that's all we got for today. I'll see you guys tomorrow. I appreciate you guys showing up on a Sunday. That's amazing. And uh, that's all for today. Anyhow, I will see you guys manana. Adios.